Hey, welcome to this tutorial. I am Tino from PHP Academy and in this tutorial series I will guide you through how to create a blog. This is a continuation on the MySQL series which means I will put focus on MySQL. However, I'll try to explain everything around it like the logic I'm using in normal PHP code um, I will try to explain that as well and as clear as possible. So let's start by taking a look at the folder structure. Here we have the simple directory. I think I called it simple because it's a very simple blog. Doesn't matter. Anyway, in it we have a resources directory and we will use this to store any files which contain functionality so which do stuff but don't actually output anything if that makes sense so here we have this init.php file for example which we will use to establish a database connection and other things so basically we do not need users to get access to this file and that's why we use this .htaccess file with deny from all in it. This means that users including yourself cannot actually directly browse to any of the files in the resources directory. So here's a quick sample of what it looks like without any posts of course so here you can add posts or add a category here we'll have a category list etc but let's say we browse to the resources directory and then go to init.php forbidden this is a very useful technique to use and I definitely recommend using it anyway in this func directory we will store files which contain functions which we are going to use inside our PHP. Now these functions range from checking if a category exists to adding posts to a database or even just um, editing a post. And here we have all these files um, which we use for deleting things, adding things, and of course index.php to display a list of posts. Oh, by the way, this config.php file is for um, setting configuration variables like, like your database credentials. So let me now quickly take you through the database structure. In the next video I will show you how I created this. Basically we have two tables, categories and posts. And categories just contains an ID, which will be an integer of course, and a category name. Very simple. Um, category names are generally not long, so we use 24 here. But I'll cover that in the next part. And the posts table contains slightly more fields. An ID. Here we have the get ID. This is exactly the same as the ID here in the categories table. So we're using the relational model here. Remember that. Very important. And then we have title, which is kind of obvious. Contents, which is just the... Um, the post itself and then we have date posted which simply is the date and time at which um, the post was added to the database. So that is basically all I want to say now. In the next part we're going to start structuring the database. I'm going to empty this and then we're going to do it from scratch. And we'll see 
if we can also start some coding in the next part, but no guarantees. So, see you in the next part.